welcome to News Now. The Nigerian Army says one soldier was killed and three others injured after Boko Haram terrorists ambushed a military location in Karangawa, Borno State, northeast Nigeria. A statement from Army spokesperson Colonel Sani Usman says the troop, however, managed to repel the attack, killing 13 Boko Haram insurgents in the process. The statement also says the troops who were assisted by the Air Force were able to repel the attack and uh, recovered several arms and ammunition from the insurgents. The offensive is coming a few days after the insurgents killed an army officer, Lieutenant Colonel Mohammed Abu Ali, and six other soldiers at Malam Fatori in Borono State. The Nigerian Air Force says its troops have hit several Boko Haram camps in northern Borno as it steps up its war against insurgency. A statement from the force's director of public relations group, Captain Ayodele Famuywa, says the operations were carried out on Sunday, the 5th of November. The location's heat are in Kashimeri, Tumbu, Guinea, and Chukungudu in northern Borno state. The Nigerian army on Monday buried the six soldiers and one officer who were killed in an ambush by terrorist sect Boko Haram last Friday. The event, which was attended by top government officials and seven military chiefs, was held at the military cemetery in Abuja. President Mohamed Buhari, who was represented by his chief of staff, Abba Kiari, assured the families of the departed soldiers of government support at all times. Chief of Army Star Lieutenant General Tuku Boratai also paid tributes to the falling soldiers, saying their deaths would not be in vain. The remains of the gallant men who had fought to keep Nigeria's northeast safe from the clutches of Boko Haram. The six soldiers and one officer were killed in an ambush by the insurgents on Friday, November 4th. Their death, especially that of their commandant, Lieutenant Colonel Mohammed Abu Ali, a soldier respected for his dedication and accomplishment, in the war against the insurgents has hit the nation's military hard. It was a solemn ceremony as close family members, colleagues, friends and their superiors gather here to pay their last respect and bid them a final farewell. The officer and soldiers, together with their colleagues, have shown unalloyed commitment to the government good of all Nigerians. They were fearless responsive, inspiring, selfless, and dedicated to the search of their duties. In these qualities lie the foundation of our national values. They were brave, precise, professional, and inspiring. They led the battle to recapture the following towns and villages, Monguno, Baga, New Marte, Bama, Goza, Banki Junction, Gamborungala, Yale, Yemteke, Bita, Doronera, Kangarua, Arege, Abadam, and Malam Fatori. In these battles, they rescued women and children, fathers and mothers, the young and the old, and restored peace and hope to Nigerian citizens. With the tributes over, the bodies of the fallen heroes are lowered into the freshly dug graves. Among those who have come here to pay their last respect is a friend of the late Lieutenant Colonel Abu Ali. He never considered all of that. When he went into the army, he went in and gave his all. He didn't act like, a lot of rich kids would normally act like spoiled kids. But Abu Ali was dedicated right from his days in Command Secondary School, Joss, you know, where he started from. He was always committed, very quiet young man, very focused, very disciplined, but above all, he was very passionate about Nigeria. And it showed, and what, when the news came to us as old students that he had passed on,
it was a huge blow. It came during a national ESCO meeting. We heard that some a, a hero had fallen, some soldiers had been killed, and we just thought it was just anybody. And then when we heard, we felt bad because we were planning to celebrate the 40th anniversary uh, of the school, and he was one of those we were going to, you know, honor. And then only for us to hear a news that he had passed on, and it was a devastating blow for all of us. Nigeria has lost, the army has lost, and I think I w it will be fitting for the uh, for the authorities to name a monument after this young man to inspire many more young men to fight for this country and give their lives just as Muhammad Abu Ali has done. The ceremony here is a clear reminder that though Boko Haram may be a defeated force, it still poses a potential threat. Nigeria has been battling the insurgents for more than seven years now. Though the army has succeeded in pushing back the sect within the past year, the terrorists still state some attacks in the northeast. And in recent times, those attacks have become all too frequent. The death of Commandant Abu Ali and some of his men only clearly shows that much work still needs to be done for Nigeria to finally bury the ghost of Boko Haram. At least 40 people have been killed after suspected herdsmen attacked a community at a mining site in Gidang Aru, village of Birding Bindin district of Maru local government area in Zamfara state, that's uh, northwest Nigeria. The attack, which has been confirmed by the spokesperson of the Zamfara State Police Command, Shehu Mohammed, occurred on Monday evening. Mohammed, who assured that the suspect will soon be apprehended, says the police force has already deployed an anti terrorism squad to the affected community to prevent further attacks. The chairman of Maru local government area, Salisu Dangulbi, also confirmed the killings but said the staff of the local council were still assisting security agents in their investigation. The Zamfara state government has already set up a panel to investigate the incident. Nigeria's Supreme Court has upheld the election of Syriaka Dixon as the gov duly elected governor of Bielsa State. The court reaffirmed the decision of the Bielsa State Governorship Election Tribunal and the Appeal Court, which also upheld the election. Dixon of the People's Democratic Party had defeated the All Progressives Congress's candidate, Timmy Pre Silva, at the election held in January of 2016. Following the results, Silva challenged the election at the tribunal, accusing INEC and the PDP of working in concert to rig the election in favor of uh, the PDP. However, in its ruling, the seven-man panel of the Apex Court, led by Justice Tanku Muhammad, held that the, sup the Supreme the supplementary election that took place on January the 9th, 2016, was proper and valid. Justice Stanko says the court will give reasons for the judgment on November the 18th. The Nigerian Senate has resolved to probe the country's Ministry of Transport, headed by Rotimi Amechi, over plans to concession the country's railways to an American firm, General Electric. The Senate's resolution followed a motion by Akpan Basi, a senator representing Cross River State, Basi in his motion alleges that uh, Amechi violated the Public Enterprises and Commercialization Act by unilaterally engaging General Electric for the concessioning of the Western and Eastern Rail Lines. Following debate on the motion, the Senate mandated its Committee on Privatization, Finance and Land Transport, Anti-Corruption and Financial Crimes, as well as Trade and Investment, to look into the matter. Suspected militants have attacked a state-run oil pipeline in Wari Delta State, southern Nigeria. That's according to a community leader and an army officer in the region. The attack was actually carried out in the early hours of Tuesday. No group has yet claimed responsibility for the attack, but all fingers point at the direction of the Niger Delta Greenland Justice Mandate. Last week, the militants attacked a Transfocado exports trunk line trunk line now shortly after President Buhari had held a meeting with leaders of the Niger Delta to seek ways on how to put an end to the current attacks on pipelines in the region. The group has also vowed to continue attacks until its representatives are included in the talks. The Code of Conduct Tribunal has adjourned the trial of Senate President Bukola Sarakil till January 11, 2017. Before the adjournment, the prosecuting counsel Paul Usaro had continued with his cross-examination of his key witness, Michael Wetkas, a detective of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Now, during his cross-examination, Wetkas admitted he did not speak with the Kara State government or interview Sarakil during his investigation. 
Sarah Key is currently facing a 16-count charge of false asset declaration while he was the governor of Kwara State. He had previously lost his appeals to stop the trial at the Federal High Court, Appeal Court and the Supreme Court. The Court of Appeal in Abuja has reserved ruling on the appeal filed by the McCarthy-led caretaker committee of the People's Democratic Party till Thursday, November 10, 2016. The Justice Ibrahim Saulawa-led panel gave the ruling after listening to the arguments of both counsel on Tuesday. The panel is suspected to determine whether Jagadesh should be granted leave to appeal the judgment of the Federal High Court Abuja, which ordered that Jimo Ibrahim be recognized as the party's candidate in the Undo state governorship election. It will also determine the legitimate national leadership of the party and power to conduct the governorship primaries, among others. President Mohamed Buhari has directed security agencies to ensure a violence-free elections in Ondo and River State, saying if an election cannot be conducted in one state, the country should forget about 2019. According to a statement issued by Garba Shehu, presidential spokesman on Tuesday, the president said this while speaking at a state dinner in Benin, the Edo state capital. Buhari said the forthcoming governorship elections in Ondo and national and state assembly rerun elections in Rivers would serve as a test for the general elections in 2019. The Nigerian Naval Officers' Wife Association on Tuesday commissioned three bedroom bungalow staff quarters and ten classroom blocks for Naval Officers' Wives Educational Center in Abuja. The special guest of honor at the event, the Chief of Defense Staff General Gabriel Onodishaki, says the project is born out of the commitment to provide quality education to children and wards of the Nigerian Navy personnel as well as tackle social challenges in the family. On her part, the president of Naval Officers Wives Association, Theresa Ibas, said the project is to ease space problems facing the school, adding that the association will continue to promote education. NOAA has increasingly become the platform to tackle many of the social challenges confronting the families of personnel, particularly in the absence of their spouses. It accomplishes this by engaging a wide range of activities. This include the provision of crutches in naval barracks and bases, establishment of schools and skill acquisition centers, provision of market stores, as well as providing general welfare support to officers and rating families. It is gratifying to note that these programs and activities have continually impacted positively on the well-being of personnel families. This immediate accomplishment for which we assemble here eloquently underscores the determination of the current leadership of NOAA not to rest on its house, but to widen gradually the scope of its services to its beneficiaries. It became necessary to embark on these projects to ensure that the learning environment was improved and the accommodation need of our staff was eased to motivate them to a more eff effective discharge of their duties. That was a very good uh, business. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The furniture you, you, you brought was very perfect. <laughs> that's how we roll. <laughs> uh, because then let me do you uh, receipts. Yeah. How much of it again? Uh, uh, one million naira. Okay, right 2.5. Mbano. Mm -hmm. The deal was uh, for one million naira now. Okay, right 3 million. I'll give you 500. Um, oh, no. I just do business like, <laughs> like that now. Oh. Yeah. Hey, in that case, give me back my check. Let me go and look for when I understand business. Take. Oh, oh, oh. Your loss. Ah. Hey, it is only for incorruptible customers. What are you talking? Now get out. What, what, what kind of this? You will just die. No, 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 no. You will die. The that, that is the door. Now get out from here. Rubbish. Look, my people. Make me only add money for original invoice price. That's not corruption. Say no. Not in my country. Corruption not in my country.
Welcome back. Nigeria is desperately trying to wean itself away from imports following the drastic reduction in its forex earnings as a result of the sustained fall in oil prices and militancy in the country's oil producing region of Niger Delta, which of course has seen its oil production levels slip. Now, the situation has compelled the country's central bank to devalue the Naira, but the scarcity of foreign exchange still persists. The government is now trying to get Nigerians to begin to patronize locally made goods through the Buy Made in Nigeria campaign, but it does not appear Nigerians are ready to cut down on their huge appetite for foreign goods. The question then is, just why are Nigerians so much in love with foreign products? Our correspondent Flores Shalonge has been finding out. To get a clear picture of Nigerians' craze for imports, you just need to look at the country's annual import bill. It is $20 billion just for food alone. Despite the severe scarcity of forex and the excessively high exchange rates, especially in the black market, Nigerians are not showing any sign to cut down on their appetite for imports. The demand for dollars is $2.5 billion a week. And I have this from high authorities within the system. Every week, Nigerians are looking for $2.5 billion to import things. We don't have it. Modern shopping malls are springing up almost everywhere across the country. But the bulk of items on their shelves are imported. Quite a number of the imported goods are actually produced locally, but they hardly catch the fancy of consumers. Nigerian goods are more expensive than even the foreign goods most times. And that's why, I, most evidently, I don't patronize with Nigerian goods. The good ones are so expensive. Just look around you. Look at all these um, shots there. They are made in Nigeria, but their um, quality is actually inferior compared to other goods. It is a frustrating situation for genuine local manufacturers who say indeed in some cases the quality of some locally made products could be an issue. Yes, I share the feelings of Nigerians when they say that the cost of Nigerian made products are perhaps high and that the quality is low. Nigerian products are not substandard. Uh, we take our time to produce and stay within Nigerian standards. But the issue of fake does not just apply to locally made goods. Quite a number of the foreign goods flooding Nigerian markets are also substandard. With no proper checks at the port of entry, they make their way into the local markets where they are sold for prices far less than local ones. We believe that government is the biggest buyer, whether anybody likes it or not. Government is the biggest. And therefore, if government concentrates on making sure that everything its agencies, its ministries, and uh, parastatals use are locally made, they can enforce it because it's coming from government. Once they do that, the entire thing will trickle down. We are beginning to see Nigerians do well, and we as Nigerians appreciate them. The government is pushing for that change in mentality to get Nigerians to look inwards. It's Buy Made in Nigeria campaign is trending at the moment. Just recently, the Nigeria Army awarded contracts to local shoe manufacturers to make 50,000 pairs of boots for the country's soldiers. It is the very first time the Nigeria Army will be buying local made footwear. If people just take time, they will see amazing productivity and capacity of this country to do things. If only people can just stop and understand that most of the things they are patronizing overseas can be done even better in this area. In June this year, the Nigeria Senate amended the country's procurement law, making it compulsory for government ministries and agencies to buy made in Nigerian goods in order to grow local industry and save the country's foreign reserves. But a lot more still needs to be done to get ordinary Nigerians to think more of home than abroad when it comes to their consumption habits. Endurance Alunge, TV360, Lagos.
Now, oil prices rose on Tuesday ahead of the U.S. presidential election as investors loosened some of their recent bets against economically sensitive assets such as crude and equities. Brent crude oil, Brent crude oil features now were up 32 cents at 46.57 per barrel, while U.S. crude features were up 28 cents at 45.17 per barrel. The Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries forecast demand for its oil will rise in the next three years, suggesting its 2014 decision to let prices fall to cup costly arrival supplies is delivering higher market share. The group meets November the 30th and has pledged to reach a deal on cutting output to try to erode a two-year oil, a two-year global surplus. After a long and exceptionally negative campaign, Americans voted on Tuesday for their next president as opinion polls showed Democrat Hillary Clinton with a narrow lead over Republican Donald Trump. Now, in a battle that focused on the character of the candidates, Clinton, 69, a former U.S. First Lady, Senator and Secretary of State, and Trump, 70, a New York businessman, made final fervent appeals to voters late on Monday to turn out at the polls. The Republican candidate has also indicated he will not accept the final result if he is not declared as the winner. Now, polls started in the... Polls actually started in the early hours of Tuesday after results expected late on Tuesday or early Wednesday morning. So quick means by this time tomorrow we would know who the next president of the United States of America will be. Well, as Americans now go to the poll to elect a new president, the election, of course, has been followed very closely here in Nigeria. TV Tracy spoke to an analyst and a magazine editor, Chude Judemo, who says the U.S. presidential election is very much important to Nigeria and Africa in so many ways and that the outcome of the election could go a long way in defining the continent's future relations with America. Absolutely, Nigerians should be concerned about the results of the American elections because as a country we are dependent, sadly, on, um, on a lot of foreign nations in the West, especially America. Um, huge support from the USAID, m m massive input and interventions by the State Department, um, our foreign policy is largely defined in terms of our relationships with America. Our government actively, sometimes embarrassingly, treats America as a big brother, even literally. Um, and so, yes, we should be concerned. Um, a, a change in the warm relationships that we have now will impact very dramatically on health care, on, on even, in, obviously, immigration, um, support for businesses, civil society, um, across board. So it's, uh, it's, of, it's not just a theoretical thing, it's important for Nigeria, whatever happens. Of these two candidates, who do I think would be more supportive of Africa? Obviously, it, obviously, I'd say Hillary Clinton. And that's only because she has promised to continue from wherever Barack Obama stopped. So with her, there's, you expect a continuation. Also, she's, for good or bad, a member of the, um, um, the, 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 the normal Washington uh, foreign policy establishment. And those people believe in engagement. They believe in engaging with Africa as a partner, especially much of Sub-Saharan Africa. So as much as she has promised a continuation of Barack Obama's principles and worldview about the continent, about the world, then you would expect that she will be more uh, open to, to Africa. Trump has, has, is nationalist. You know, he has projected a vision of America that is more insular and more inward focused. He is unlikely to be predisposed to um, relationships where America isn't necessarily taking the lead. He has threatened even relationships in America like NATO, the climate change agreement between America and China and ETC. And so he doesn't quite show a continuation of the present status quo in terms of international relations. And so yes, it's more likely that Hillary Clinton will be better predisposed to Africa and other countries. The UN says an explosion in Congo has killed a child and injured 32 Indian peacekeepers. The blast hit the peacekeepers while they were out on a morning run in the western Goma neighborhood of Kishero, the mission added. The course was not immediately clear. About 18,000 uniformed UN personnel operate in Congo where millions died in regional conflicts between 1996 and 2003 and dozens of armed groups continue to operate. 
To Sports Now, Super Eagles captain Mikel Obi has urged his teammates to maintain their focus and discipline in their second World Cup qualifier against Algeria. The Eagles take on the Desert Foxes on November the 12th at the Godswill Aquabio Stadium in Uyo, Aquabom State, southern Nigeria. Speaking to newsmen after the first training session uh, ahead of the game, Mikel admitted that the game against Algeria would be a very difficult one, but says with the right attitude, the Eagles will emerge victorious. Victory for the Eagles will put the Nigerians in control of the group after they achieved victory in their first game away to Zambia. Inter Milan have named Stefano Pioli as head coach to replace Dutchman Frank de Boer. Pioli is vastly experienced, having previously coached an array of Italian clubs including Parma, Sassuolo, Bologna and Lazio, leading the latter to third place in Serie A in 2015 before being fired in the middle of last season. He becomes Inter's third coach in four months following the previous sacking of Roberto Mancini in August. Spanish champions Barcelona says it is disappointed by a court ruling which ordered its Brazilian star Neymar, former president Sandro Russell, and his successor Joseph Maria Bartomeu face charges for fraud. The allegations relate to the issue concerning the original amount Barcelona paid for Neymar during his transfer from Santos in 2013. Prosecutors had initially lost a request to try the trio after a judge had ruled that the case could not have could have sporting, ethical and disciplinary repercussions. However, the prosecutors on Monday won an argument for a new trial. The club says it disagrees with the decision but also says it is confident of victory in court. Well, that's it in news now. We thank you very much for watching. Continue to stay tuned to TV360.